Yo, hello there. Absolutely massive changes are coming to Hearthstone Battlegrounds, guys. Let's discuss it. So, Nefarian has been removed from the Battlegrounds hero pool. I mean, Nefarian has been unplayable since Unstable Ghoul was released. Every hero could just buy Unstable Ghoul and they're basically Nefarian at the cost of playing six minions. And somehow this is still worth it because Nefarian is so niche that in that it's only good in some situations. And when it's good, it's really good. And for those situations, you buy Ghoul and then, yeah. Uh, pretty much I think they removed it because they couldn't really buff his hero power to zero. Then he would be like way too busted. So they just uh, decided to probably uh, bring it back with a new hero power some time later. I think it's one of the biggest buffs of the patch. Whack Toggle going from plus two to plus two plus one. Now she's basically a better Tyrion. You can play the aggro curve. You can buy one minion on turn one. Maybe a token generator and even sell the token and then a hero power on one. On turn two, you buy another minion hero power. Turn three, you will have one roll to buy a minion of a different type than the first two. And then if you manage to assemble the three different types of minions on five gold, you just press hero power on five gold. On six gold, you go level up, you can buy another minion. Maybe a fourth type, if you're like super duper lucky. Then you go press again, level up, press, level up, press, you're tough and four and you're strong. And then you can like switch the bad minions or just bring something that reinforces your board or just use the early game advantage to play normally from Tavern 4. You don't even need to go to 4. We can just go to 3. Tegan wasn't going to 4. Tegan was just going to 3, staying a bit on 3, going to 4 afterwards. Plenty of ways of playing. I find it very interesting and I think that one health is going to make a big difference. I'm really um, curious of how powerful it's going to be. My prediction is going to be that Togwaggle is going to become now a top 10 hero in Hearthstone Battlegrounds. Again, a lot of buffs are happening, so it's very hard to accurately predict the power level of a hero, but I am putting my money on Wag Toggle. Let's see if I'm correct. It's interesting anyways. Um, Curator got buffed. He was already pretty good in the initial fights, and this buff pretty much only makes him better in the initial fights. Now you definitely don't sell your Amalgam on 5. I still think it's a bad hero if you don't start with the token. And, okay, not a bad hero, but like... If you don't start with the token and then have some buffers later, he's not going to be amazing. He's just going to be okay. Now he gets a bit better in the initial fights. Probably can compete a bit with Lich King and uh, Alakir, which kind of like came out of nowhere to just win the early game fights. Kirita used to be the OG of early game fights. Now he's going to get a bit better. Still not unbeatable, but a bit better. Um, as for like how the hero is ranked, I still think he's going to become the same. This buff pretty much keeps him playable sometimes. He, without the buff, maybe he would go to close to unplayable. By getting slightly buffed, he's still there as a decent pick sometimes. Hook Task. Most interesting buff because this hero power was just boring and not interesting at all. They went back to the old hero power, but put the one gold um, requirement on it. This is going to change a lot about Hook Task. You're pretty much going to have to play her aggro ideally buy token on one and then on two you hero power by one and then on three you hero power by roll and then you go classic level by hero power level hero power it's just like a farm curve a lot of one one gold hero power um, heroes want to play this uh, rafam curve when leveling up and she's going to be a very good hero to get triples and you're gonna have games where you get super lucky and she's gonna feel amazing but you're going to have games where you don't get super lucky and she's not going to feel amazing. Um, I would think Hook Task is going to become close to a top 10 hero, but not really a top 10 hero. She's going to be kind of like where Elise is right now in the meta game. Like, you don't really curse the skies and Bob if you get offered decent, like, unplayable heroes. You're going to be like, okay, I'll just take it and I think it's a fine hero to have. Um, here's one hero part that I don't really like. Rat King. I just... I just don't like this hero power. Oh. My dog came here to say hello. Um, I just don't like the Rat King hero power simply because it's just rewarding you for getting lucky and punishing you for not getting lucky. I had plenty of games where I rolled none of the minions that my hero power switched into and I had plenty of games where my hero power rolled every single turn into like two or three minions that were buffed by the by the stat line thing. So it's just going to be a more high roll hero that you're going to have to play more often because he, he got better. 
I don't mind that. They probably want this kind of hero to be in the game. I don't think he's going to be game-breaking. It's fine. Fine. Just buff it. Like, I would have preferred Rat King to not be in the game or be unplayable. If we cannot have that, it's fine to buff him. Whatever. I don't mind it. It's so small that I should probably not care about it. And it's still, like, an interesting hero. When you hire it gives you that uh, dopamine, you know? Like, ah, oh, you go crazy on the Rat King. Um, <laughs> Rakanishi talking about crazy heroes. One of my chat's favorite heroes... Um, we even have like commands with like torches, like, oh, Rakanishu, Rakanishu. Um, give a minion friendly stats, but you can target it. Really good hero power. He's going to be better than Edwin. Better than Edwin. I call it here. Pretty much, it was already a better hero power than Edwin, but it was costing twice, and it was random. And still, I would, okay, I would pick Edwin over Rakanishu. But now, just because I have to pay one extra gold, I have the guarantee of getting stats without having to buy some trash minions. Rakanishu is just a better Edwin. In my opinion, he's going to be always a better Edwin. Okay, not always, almost always. He's just going to be phenomenal. I'm going to love him. And I think Rakanishu is now maybe better than York, maybe better than Keltas. Maybe I'm exaggerating, but I feel the power here. I think Rakanishu is going to become super top tier and like uh, definitely amazing hero. We'll see. I, I put him at top 10. Top 10 heroes in the game. George. The George buff doesn't really change things that much. So it's still doing the same thing. Still Divine Shield. One gold cheaper. I don't think it's going to influence the way you do things by that much. Um, He's still going to become a safe defense pick. But I don't think you're ever going to be like, wow, I'm playing George. I'm going to win the lobby. These days are past... Uh, I think he was like that in the beginning, but even then, mostly because people didn't know exactly how to play every single hero. Still an okay hero. Not not bad. Okay. Izera. A lot of people are hyped about this hero power, but I'm not really seeing the hype. So instead of getting one dragon per turn, you get one dragon every single time your tavern is refreshed. The question is, what does tavern being refreshed means? If, let's say I freeze three out of four minions, me getting one minion at the beginning of the next turn... Does that count as Tavern being refreshed and I'm going to get another dragon on top of it? Or do I have to press the button or just not freeze anything to be able to get the extra dragon? Even if you get the dragon as, as long as you don't freeze all the minions, which is how I imagine it is uh, to, to be, I still don't think this is game-breaking. You still need to pay free gold for a dragon. And sometimes paying free gold for a dragon is not going to win you games. It's going to help you to get triples, but dragons don't really have synergy gold-based. They have power-based synergy. You still need to spend the gold, but if you spend the gold and do fair things, you're going to just lose some fights and die, and I just don't see Zera being better than Toki, let's say. I might be wrong, but that's my guess. I don't think Zera is going to be much better. I'm still probably not going to play her, unless it's just one time to test it for you guys. But maybe I'm wrong. I love dragons, so I hope I hope I'm wrong. Actually, uh, AK Scamzarak, one of my favorite heroes. I'm super happy, and I was even discussing uh, with you guys uh, who were watching my stream a couple of days ago when I actually played one game with Zamzarak because I got only garbage picks other than him. We were discussing it, and we concluded that one gold hero power would actually be playable. You would actually be able to fit it in much more often in your turn than two gold. Two gold, you have to play your turn around it. One gold. You're like, instead of giving the tip to Bob or one role that you don't even need, just get the hero power in. Also, higher chance for Ice Block without effigy, higher chance for splitting image, which are the best secrets in the game. I really think AK Zamzarak becomes something. I don't know if we're going to see him every single lobby, but he definitely becomes a top 15 pick, a pocket pick, an interesting pick. I'll definitely play it more often. I love this hero. Galakrond's greed becoming Zero also opens a lot of uh, dynamics. Hero power no longer freezes. So what you're going to want to do, ideally, classic buy token generator on turn one, hero power minion and freeze. Turn two, level, hero power the same minion, freeze. And then you kind of want to sell your token, double buy, still hero power the same minion, freeze. And then you either hero power get the five drop or your hero power get something else, two other minions, freeze again. And then on seven gold, you go tavern free and you get your 6 drop. Or, if you don't like the 6 drop, you can freeze, buy something else, freeze it again, 
and you re-roll it and buy it on eight gold. Either way, no matter how you put it, a five star on six or a six star on seven sounds pretty good. And you only have to weaken your board by a little bit, mostly just buying a couple of one stars over two stars. I think it's worth it. I really think it's worth it. And I think it's going to be a top 10 hero in this game. Galakrond and Wack Toggle are going to be top 10. Don't quote me on that. Even though I know you will. <laughs> this is These are some bold claims. Tess, in the same form as Curator, gets a minute buff. Something small so that she doesn't become unplayable. A lot of people didn't understand this buff, but pretty much... Let's say you, you're Tavern 2 and you are shown 4 minions per roll, right? If you hero power as Tess, if your opponent had 7 minions, you would only see 4 of them. Well, now you see all 7. That, that's the whole difference. So if you have the, the money, you can just buy their entire board. Guaranteed. If you want a minion from, their oppo from your opponent, you're going to get it. Is she better? Yes. Is she way better? No. Yes. It's a bigger change than what Curator got. But it's nothing comparable with what Galakron got. Still really good. Talking about really good, Elise, two gold. Elise was already one of my favorite heroes. And even though she wasn't a top 10 pick, every single time I was offered Elise and free unplayables, I would pick Elise out of the unplayables, let's say. Because I know how to play her. I know how to win with her. I know how to aggressively level up and use the maps efficiently. For two gold... <sighs> That's spicy. Like, you can buy strong minion on turn one, level up on two, and then you don't even need token generator. Just buy and map. Insane. Insane she is. I think two... <laughs> two is better than three. Yeah, no, no, thank you, Sherlock. Thank you, Sherlock RD, for enlightening us with this uh, information. No, seriously. I think two is going to be close to... Top 10. Probably going to be a top 10 hero as well, at least. Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating. I'm giving your top 10, your top 10, your top 10. <laughs> There's going to be so many top 10 heroes. Maybe we're going to like have 20 playable heroes instead of having like 10 like we do now. That's cool. That'll be interesting. I would love to see that. But yeah, I'm going to be playing at least even more than I do now. And I know I play a fair share of at least. Lord Barov now gives you back uh, the gold if a tie happens. That's very good because a lot of times you didn't want to hero power on one because it was most likely a tie. And you can you could get really screwed by ties. Not my teammate from G2. I mean, just two people having a fight and their boards both dying at the same time. Um, yeah, really good. He's going to become very good. Better than Leash Bazaar for sure. Elemental updates. Elemental is going to start rotating. A bit late, but... Better late than never. Love it. It's going to influence the games only in a better way. Rough Weaver becomes a 1 free, so he, but now he's basically a Voidwalker without a Demon Tag. Pretty good. Is this what Demons needed? Maybe. I'll definitely play Demons more often now with Elementals being a bit weaker, but I still don't think Demons are a must force. They're not like how strong they were when Floating Watcher was free. They just got like a soft buff. I would wish to see a little bit more. A little more attention. I don't know exactly what that would have been. But I don't think this... They could have went crazy and make Rough Weaver a demon. Oh, baby. Then we're talking. That, that's, I think, next thing on the menu if this doesn't work out. Blizzard probably has, like, a list of, like, things that they want to do. Just to, like, slowly push some archetypes. Ogre becoming a two-star. I don't think change is pyrodynamics too much. Are you going to buy it as a 2-5? It's, it's a playable 2-star. More playable than a 1-star. <laughs> this is good. I cannot complain. Um, I don't think it's going to make pirates like, wow. Because sometimes the 8 health was pretty annoying. Uh, Sensei at 3 is going to be pretty wow. It's basically just a better screw junk clunker. As long as you only have one other mech. Makes AFK better, if that matters, I don't know. You can start with double Sensei on AFK, like in the good old times. <laughs> or Sensei Deflecto, that's going to be a start. Sensei Deflecto AFK, Mwah, let's go, baby. 
really good change. Probably other than Jungbot going to four, which why is it not? I think it's exactly what Max needed. Maybe they experimented and they felt like if they put Jungbot at four and say at three, it's too much for Max. Uh, St South Sea Strong Arm. Now he's a tier three with a four three. That's a big change. That's probably like the biggest buff to Pyres that they've given so far. If they would also make Salty Looter two stars from three stars and revert him back to three three, I think that would really make Pirates compete for one of the best archetypes. I don't think Yoho Ogre going to two and this guy going to three and this guy getting a bit more health. He basically is now a Yeti from Constructed. Uh, I don't think these changes are enough to make Pirates tier one. They're going to be like, instead of completely unplayable other than like the one in a hundred game where you hit double Hogar, now they're going to be like fringe playable, kind of like Demons were. I don't know. I'm still not having super high hopes for Pirates, but maybe I'm just underestimating the amount of uh, strong guys that we're going to see in the game now. Well, I think it's a huge buff. Basically reverting it to what it was previously. It's going to be interesting. I'm going to love to discover Lightfang and try to play Menagerie like back in the day. Just big minions. A lot of you know me as Jerry because I was playing a lot of Menagerie. So, great to see Lightfang being back at it again. And now our boys elementals. Genie goes to 6. Still going to be one of the best units in the game in my opinion. I think... Genie at 5 is the best unit we ever had in Battlegrounds and the most game-deciding unit we ever had in Battlegrounds. At 6, he's still going to be good and he's going to be one of the main reasons why you want to go to 5 to discover 6 and discovering Genie is going to still be super sick. Guard goes to 5-1. I already wasn't the biggest fan of Guard, required so much setup. Now I'm going to be less of a fan. There are still going to be times where Guard is going to be the best pick, but eh, not going to happen that often. Little Rag loses stats as well. They're hitting the elementals that you already only would have wanted if you already had the whole engine going. Like, to play elementals, you wanted Nomi or Genie. And y the things don't change. You still want Nomi and you still want Genie. I don't know exactly the order of getting them if it changes. Because, for example, in the past, right now, for example, before the patch hits, I would get Genie over getting Nomi if offered both together. But right now... It changes because if you discover a 5, the best you can get is Nomi. There's no more Genie at 5. So you would have to go to 5, discover a 6. And if you do that, and get Genie, plus Little Rag, plus Gar, you're still going to pick Genie in either way. Question is, what if you get offered Little Rag, plus Gar, plus something else? What do you do then? That's going to be more complicated to see and figure out. But basically, I don't think this is a big enough change to Elementals to make them unplayable. I don't even think this is a big enough change to Elementals to not have Elementals be the best tribe. I still think Elementals is going to be the best tribe. I'm worried that might be the case, but maybe I'm missing something. Um, talking about missing something, another thing that Pirates were missing was Elisa being better. She gets a bit better, but I think she would have been much better if she gave plus one, plus two, then plus two, plus one. Pirates already have a lot of attack compared to health. So I think health was more important. I'm sure they're going to keep buffing pirates slowly and just like tuning their power level up if they see that it's not working. But I'm happy to see so many pirate buffs. I really am. Now Eliza is more of a consideration, even outside of pirate comps. Um, Amargadon basically doesn't buff himself anymore. So doesn't consider himself. Like if you had a beast, a dragon, and you played Amalgadon, he would buff three times because you had beast, dragon, and him. Now he doesn't consider himself, so he would only get two buffs. If you already have an Amalgadon, he's going to consider that one, but he's not going to consider it himself. So basically, compared to the past, he gets one less buff. Two less buffs if you consider Bran. It's a pretty big change. He's probably going to be only good late game and not early mid. Unless you have Bran, but who knows? We'll see how it plays out. I really like the changes... On most things, I'm not the most thrilled about minion changes. I feel like they could have hit Elementals with one more hit. Maybe the five star that discovers an Elemental could get a hit. I don't think Nomi should have gotten a hit, but I feel like they should have hit one more Elemental. This is probably still going to be... Let me make some predictions. 
Elementals are still going to be the best. Dragons, second best. Beasts, third best. I'm not sure when I, where, where I should put the Menagerie. We still have Bran, very good. And now we added Lightfang to the mix. So Menagerie goes up in power level. Pirates and Demons. Demons probably still unplayable. Pirates still probably fringe playable. We're going to have to see. I'm going to definitely play a lot. Oh, mechs get, mechs get a lot better with Sensei at 3. But probably not enough to compete with Elementals, Dragons, and maybe they're going to compete with Beasts with some early Sensei, shenanigans and stuff. But yeah, Sensei at 3 is definitely good for mechs. It's definitely going to be an interesting metagame. And I prefer having this type of changes rather than having no changes at all. I'm not complaining. I absolutely love most of the hero changes and I love the minion changes as well. I'm just a little bit concerned having played so much elementals that the nerfs are not big enough. You're just going to change your leveling pattern and playing pattern to still try to get genie as fast as you can because genie is utterly broken still even at 6, in my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong and this whole meta game is going to be different. Like maybe I think you can go for 6 star genie and then why you do you just going to die a lot of the games to people playing pirates and booning you out or people playing mechs and booning you out. If that's the case, then Blizzard did perfect job and I tip my virtual little fedora to them. Anyways, super happy with this patch. Looks like great changes. I'm sure that if something is not good, if pirates are too weak or if elementals are too good, they can like continue buffing and nerfing them because that's the beauty about battlegrounds. They can just do a patch whenever they want to. Nobody has, nobody's tied to their collection. So no players are necessarily badly affected if, an, if a patch happens. They're only affected positively because they get to experiment with a new meta game. I feel like the only way to have a bad patch, air quotations, would be if they would change the game entirely and then the players couldn't like play any strategy that they could, they could previously play. Murlocs not being changed at all, perfect, because I think Murlocs are perfectly balanced. I actually think Murlocs are right now super okay. And they are the only try that I also wouldn't change. Uh, and Beasts, yeah. I would also nerf dragons a bit if I was Blizzard. I would nerf elementals more, dragons a little bit. I would buff makes a bit more, pirates more, and demons more as well. But I'm still happy to see that they buffed pirates and demons. Anyways, I'm going on too many tangents. Let's just play the pattern it comes out. So this was uh, RDU. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Press the like button if you want to see some more exclusive uh, YouTube videos because right now it's mostly just my editor uh, doing some cool stream highlights, but I will try to get more involved and I'm trying to get more involved to like make uh, more specific uh, interesting videos as well. So let me, do let me also know down in the comments what you would like to see and that's about it. See you in the next video or on stream. I'm streaming almost every single day on Twitch TV RDU Live, but you probably know that already. Um, thank you for watching again. Have a great day and I wish you all the best.